thanks for the introduction. Uh, so again, Victor Gomez, I'm from Colombia, decided that I wanted to move south in the country in South America. So went down to Brazil, learned to speak Portuguese. It was great, did master and PhD there and work with a lot of people, students with different backgrounds. So Brazil is huge, uh, just as the US is and uh, they all speak Portuguese, but they have different accents, different words, things like that. So you learn to appreciate those things. Married a Brazilian, so we have a lot of multicultural uh, discussions. And the topic I was asked to present today was working with multicultural dairy employees. Uh, actually, it was multilingual training, uh, but I think we have to go beyond just the multilingual. And there's not going to be a lot of hard science on some of the things that I'm going to present here. I just started at K-State and I'm getting this program going as I move forward on my extension site. So don't worry, the slides are not going to be in Spanish, but this is just a reflection of things that I have learned through all the trainings and all the years. Uh, so we are gonna go through some introduction. Again, communication is gonna be key and that's the multilingual component. But when you are working with these immigrants, consider myself one of them, uh, we have certain specific, specific things that are going to make a huge difference uh, when training and doing that. So again, beyond multilingual, I will just uh, do some final considerations. So if we ask the producer, very basic question, and I think they all will agree, and that's the focus of the discussion today. Uh, what is the largest expense on your dairy? Everybody will say what? Feed, yes. And the second will be labor, right. So the thing is when you think on those two, labor can actually influence your feed cost. And you guys, my background is dairy cattle reproduction. I'm working on the trainings now. So I'm not gonna even dare to, de to go depth into feed costs and things like that. I don't need to convince you about this. But the thing is, we have to think of where are our dairy employees coming from? And probably I don't need to convince you about that either. But what would you say? Are they coming from the US? Are they immigrants? <coughs> yeah, so there is a, I will agree, immigrants, there is a survey that was sent across the entire United States to the different herds and it was divided by regions. Keep in mind that Iowa was considered Midwest in that survey. That's gonna be relevant as we move forward. And what you can see, this is a result of the survey. If you are interested on number of cows, these are responders to that survey. You can add this to a thousand responses percentage and the response for the regions again. And the reason I say Iowa, is what's considered Midwest is that it was almost half of the answer came from the Midwest. So Iowa included there. Uh, and what we can see, oops, not going, can you pass the slide? Okay, there we go. What we can see is uh, from this survey with about a thousand farms, uh, 150,000 employees, half of them were immigrants, okay? And if we put that in numbers, uh, we can see that on an average of five employees on each uh, dairy herd. Uh, four are full times, 1.2 is uh, part-time, but immigrants again, 2.6, almost half of them. Being very drastic, if there was something happening here and say, hey, those immigrants, although they are legal, they have to leave the US today, those farms will reduce their labor in half. So it will be very a very drastic change. And what you have to think is, okay, so these people are coming from outside, not all of them speak English, and we have to get into, uh, into very details of where, where they are coming from. It's not just from outside of the US, right? We'll have people coming from uh, the Netherlands or coming from Germany or different places and they will speak different languages. Most of people, what I see, and different surveys have showed that they are coming from Latin uh, countries or Hispanic countries. So most of them Latinos or Hispanic. And now you have to think they are different groups, right? 
Uh, it's not all of them are Mexicans or all of them are Brazilians. So Hispanics will speak Spanish, right? Uh, and Latino will be the culture. So we have some countries that are that integrate those two. And so Colombia is in there, right there. Uh, we have about 20 something that are again Latino and Hispanic, but not all Latinos are Hispanic. For example, we have Latinos like Brazil, they speak Portuguese, so not included in this uh, middle way here. And others like Spain, they speak Spanish, but they are not Latinos. So you will see how this is important as we move forward, because all of these things are going to have big, uh, big things. So I'm going to focus on the multilingual training on those Hispanic countries, right? Because uh, it's probably the most representative group out there for our dairies. And so as, as a resource, I'm going to go through, and this is going to be recorded there. So if you are watching online, you can just scan this barcode. It will take you to the, uh, to the website that I'm showing here. Uh, and the idea is that I'm going to show on this, the, on one side, the barcode, you scan. Uh, it appears a link on your cell phone. You click, it takes you there. And this is what you are going to see and from these land-grant universities. So Iowa State has a good website where you can find some training there. Uh, it's going to be offered in Spanish or English. Uh, you can find things like milk in a school, uh, etc. Uh, and you can request those training programs here as well. Calf care, handling, training, a lot of different things. So I'm going to go through different of those. New Mexico State University also have a strong program that offers a lot of resources uh, they will also offer some of these resources for some national programs in the dairy industry as well. And again, you are more than free to go. All of these resources are free for you. You can use these videos to train your employees. Some people use them as some boarding training for employees. Uh, and in more recent years, we have some about coronavirus, health, and things like that, that we have become more aware lately. Uh, the Ohio State University, uh, again, very strong program, Spanish, English. Oh, and I forgot to mention the New Mexico State University also have Kitsch or Kiche uh, program. So it's a native Indi Indian language uh, and about, I don't know, 5% of uh, dairy employees, of the immigrant dairy employees will speak that different language. So. Texas A&M as well has one called Leche Cast. Uh, these are also good to train your managers. Everybody should see this video so people know what your, your employees are, are watching. So I'm going to go just very quick. Uh, Progressive Dairy, so also the industry has some good resources out there. Progressive Dairy have this El Lechero website where I don't think it's monthly, but it's every quarter, I believe. They will... Uh, publish some good articles and things like that. So in terms of multicultural or multilingual, we even have the FIRM program. Uh, again, it's, it's way more than what you see here in, on the slide, okay? Uh, and you can go directly to that. Now, let's just start talking about some deeper things. So those are pre-recorded videos. Uh, those are great. Uh, I, I love them. Again, they help to train a lot of people, but they are not a specific for each farm. So you will find things like milk in schools, very general. They will say rules that maybe you don't apply to your farm, or they will say rules or different timings that don't apply to your farm. So also those universities, most of them will have somebody that speak different language as in, is able to go visit your farm, uh, see what you are doing, maybe make some recommendation, and do some training that will be specific for your farm. And that will be, uh, that will be yeah, set up just for your farm. And let's say that the trainings that are online, they are for uh, parallel uh, parlors, but you have a rotary parlor. Now the system, you know, it, it's, it works the same, but the functions or where these people do, how much they walk, uh, how much they should not walk is going to be different. So you want to consider those things and working with these universities is going to be great to come up uh, with those trainings. Now, 
that's also going to be very important when we go beyond multilingual. Uh, but we'll get into that just in a second. Other resources, uh, very easy. You know, you can basically translate any website right now. You just go to your Google. Uh, there is that box on the corner with that letter A there. You click. Portuguese keep appearing to me. I don't know why, but uh, you go to translate to Spanish. And just like that, the whole website, everything that is text, not images, images will not be translated, uh, but you got your website there. So, you know, maybe uh, you have to show something to a manager, you have to show something to somebody else. Maybe you are not expecting for him to do it on himself, but you go see with him, show him the website, translate, and you let him, let him read through things. Uh, Google Translate. It, it, it is amazing. I, I don't use it regularly any, anymore. Uh, but I had a student that came last year, and he was scanning things with his phone all the time. And I was showing him things on my computer, and he was, wait, do you mind if I take a picture of that? And I was like, sure, yeah, but why do you want to take a picture? So Google Translate has an option of a camera. Just You take the picture, it translates right away. And you can also. Uh, a, get to conversation. I have not used this. I, I confess that. So, but I believe that it will translate. You can transcribe things. So if you are uh, not in the mood to type a long test, you can talk and it will appear here and it will translate. So very easy to do. Uh, I have seen some people in the industry, like people had the handles big groups and some of them don't speak. There is a barrier of the, on the language. There is a guy talking to the phone and showing to the manager this is what I'm trying to say. And so, you know, you are not going to engage in huge conversation here. You are not going to solve the world. But when we need to get very specific messages across the room or across to a specific person, that's going to help you. So now let's get to, into uh, beyond the multilingual. And we are going to spend a little more time here. So what is beyond multilingual uh, and multicultural? And, and again, uh, I'm not expecting to for people to do a diversity statement on their farms. I don't mind if they have or they don't, as long as they do something that it includes or it, it, it makes a di diversity. So not as much as having something shown, but as the act of including people and, and getting to train these multilingual or multicultural people. So. To talk about multicultural, we have to talk that we are training adults here. It's not kids anymore. Uh, and for as much as you want to think these people are kids because they don't understand what you're saying and they don't understand your language, they are not kids. The big difference is we, are, we learn by motivation. So we decide what to learn and what not to learn. When you teach a kid, the center of what you are doing is the information. So you have the information give around the room and you know you expect them to learn when you are training with adults the center is the adult the information is around there we have information all day we decide what to take and what not to take but if barry comes here and tells me hey you have to learn how to balance a diet i say you know i'm working with reproduction that that doesn't make sense to me at this point i won't get to learn how to balance the diet but if you explain me, hey, but have you think that reproduction comes through the mouth of the cow and you have to get those cows to eat to have a good reproduction and not to have fat cows, as Andrea was saying, then yeah, uh, that's probably going to move me to learn about that. It's the same with your employees. Now, I have heard people in the industry saying, oh, well, uh, some of them have low education. They don't need to learn the whys. We are going to get to that, but no, they need to be motivated. I don't mind if it's through the why, through the how, uh, whatever. They need to be motivated and find the reason. Readiness, they need to learn things, and they need to find those things to be ready to apply. So if I'm going to learn something, I don't want to lose time learning something that I'm going to apply in a year from now. I need to learn something because Friday I have to give a seminar about multicultural training. And so I need that information right away, right? And 
experience. We learn from experience. We are all adults. We have spent our life going. I move from different countries, different backgrounds. So experiences create also bias, but that's what moves us to learn different things. And, and we have to challenge those. And sometimes we have to trick those experiences to replace with new knowledge on those things. So self-direction. Uh, we don't want somebody telling us you have to do this or you have to do that, right? And when we are working with multicultural people, some of us are more proud and we don't want somebody, hey, you have to do this. No, I want that guy to tell me, hey, if you do this, you are going to get that. That's the direction you should go. And I want to go there because I want to do it. And the orientation is, again, uh, showing them just what would be the right direction. Now, this will apply either if it's somebody coming from outside or an, an immigrant or somebody in the US. But again, some of these things, when we talk about Latinos and Hispanos, are going to be stronger in our blood. So again, we don't want somebody telling us what to do, or we just want them to show us. And we want to feel like you were saying, Andre, the answer have to come from the farmer. Here, the answer have to come from the employee. Right? He, he needs to feel, OK, I found this. He didn't realize you were pushing him to do that, but, but that's the way it should go. So if we compare how we teach kids and how we teach adults, again, the adults are, uh, we are independent. Uh, we learn from our experiences, reading this, uh, and it's always a perspective. We have our listening, our intentional perspective. Uh, we want this to be applied immediately. And this is a huge one for me. It needs to be problem center. So uh, if, if you present a challenge, hey, we're having high somatic cells, let's work on that challenge. We, we have to do this training so we can solve that problem. Uh, and now one of, the, one of the things that I find in, in some pre-recorded training is not a, just the challenge that is not a rotary or a, a parallel parlor, is that sometimes people say, you know, uh, if you do that, somatic cell is going to increase. We lose meal production. Those things are great. But the immigrant that just came last year or that came this month, sometimes he won't care about if you are losing money. They have to see how this thing is impacting them, right? And, and it's not that he doesn't care if you lose money. It's like he may be thinking this is a temporary job. And we are going to talk about how we need to engage those people so they feel that if, if the farm lose money, they are losing something as well, right? If at, at the point that they are not there yet, you could say things like, hey, if we are, if we are increasing somatic cells, losing meal production, what the farm is going to do is just increase number of cows. And it's just going to be more cows for you to milk and things like that. So, you know, there are two things we can do. We either work on the empathy of the person with the cow, or we either work directly on what is, how this is going to affect your job, your every, everyday job. And how this is going to affect the group you are working with. And those things are huge for us as Latinos because we want to be proud and we want to be, our team is the best team in the farm. We get along so well. We do things so good that everybody wants to be just as we are. So when we think again, beyond multilingual is the whole culture. Okay. And so all the belief, food, the religion, uh, the manners, the habit, communication, the arts, everything is included there. And I'm not expecting for every farmer now to become an expert on all these, uh, all these things on the 27 countries of, of the people they are receiving, but at least to uh, be aware that there are some difference there. And so if we go, for example, uh, to the, just the definition of the word, it's just to be aware of different cultures, right? Now, there are different levels in which you can be aware. You can say, okay, everything there is just, uh, I don't know, Latin people, or, or they are just uh, Brazilians or Colombians or Mexicans, and, and there will be a difference there. But you can recognize, okay, there are immigrants, or you can say, okay, there are immigrants, they have different cultures, I respect that. Or you can recognize, okay, these guys are Brazilians, Colombians, uh, Mexicans, they have different culture. Let's try to uh, put some of those things inside of our operation. And again, I'm not saying you're going to put a Mexican store in your farm, 
But for example, if these guys like to play soccer and, they, and you let them play soccer in, in your dairy, that's going to help them to feel comfortable there. And maybe even to bring kids on Sunday to play soccer with them, they are going to appreciate that. As Latin people, we have something that is, we are very, we are humble and we're very grateful of things that uh, people will do to receive us here, right? And again, if we think only on Latinos, Hispanic people, or Latinos people, we have more than 20. Most of our people will come from Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Salvador. It's important for you to recognize those countries and, and recognize where do you have people working from those countries in your operation? Because there are things, small things, like if you just Google Mexicans versus Guatemalans, you will find out that historically there was a war between those two countries. And so some people may still be biased. If you put, say, five Mexicans and one, one person from Guatemala, you think they are all Mexican, there is a problem. Well, just check them. It, it may be a small thing, but it may be that that guy is not getting along with the entire group. Uh, and so those things are going to make a huge difference. Now, I would say understanding where people are coming from will help you to understand uh, their behavior. And I, I, I love to tell my dad's old employee story. And uh, it may, this is four years ago, so it may be that it doesn't apply to this anymore. But my dad started in the agricultural business about four years ago. He bought his first tractor. Right, he was very happy, his first tractor. It was not a new tractor, it was a new tractor. And so this is the way we do irrigation in Colombia, you know. And he said to this guy probably that was gonna drive the tractor now, hey, we are in a very humid and hot place. This is not a new tractor. So when you are gonna put water into the radiator of the tractor, please don't use this water, use clean water. You know what that guy said? He turned to my dad and said, look, I drink that water. How is it possible I cannot put that water into the tractor? So that guy came forward and said that. But we don't expect people that arrive a month here, it's just it's been here for a month or don't speak English, to come forward and say something like that. But they, this is just a, an exaggeration of something that, you know, we have to tell this person, hey, no, you cannot put water, that water into the tractor, but most important, you should not be drinking that water. So, you know, our job is going to go beyond just treating cows or, or how they milk the cow and also teach these people uh, what, should be, what should they be doing uh, in, on their health or not. And some people may be coming from places that are milking cows like this, right? And I'm not criticizing the system. Uh, I'm not criticizing the system, but this guy has milk cows like that for 10 years. Suddenly he comes to the US, right? No family, no nothing, he's new here. And he's asked to wear boots, wear coverall, wear these long gloves. It's hot in the, in the, right? It's hot in the uh, parlor. And he's like, why do I even have to do that? I mean, we were, we were selling our milk like this back in, in Colombia where I was from. And so you have to explain these people why you have to do that, why you have to work like this. And yeah, I agree. Some people will not care. Some people will not understand. Our job is to go back and reinforce that message because they probably will not get it the first time, uh, but they will get it later. And if we have only one person that gets that message, say it's the manager, he will understand and he will reinforce the message every day. We are not there every day, right? So. We need somebody in the farm that gets the message and can communicate that. Uh, again, we could play uh, finding difference between those two pictures and it'll be just huge. There are very, very small things like this, for example. Uh, Andre is laughing because he probably <laughs> suffered just like I did. So this map is just showing the format of the dates that we use. So if you see blue, we use the day, then the month, then the year. And North America or the America, the United States use the month, the day, and the year. So think that you leave, you, you left a note for Andrea and say, or, or Leticia, just not to use Andrea, Leticia, my wife, Brazilian, uh, and say, hey, come to visit me, uh, 1, 12, 22. 
that could be trouble. I mean, <laughs> uh, honestly, and I have suffered this thing sometimes. Sometimes I don't even remember if I'm using this date or this other date anymore because we deal with, you know, immigrant employees and we deal with uh, students that come from outside of the U.S. as well. And suddenly we are in a, in a meeting with all everybody that is American and, okay, we have to switch the ship and, and go back to this. But, you know, those are small details that are going to make a difference. And if, if you know about these things, uh, all these things are going to show, yeah, this guy cares. Uh, they are doing things for us. We learn a lot also from images. We, everybody probably, but uh, immigrants, Latinos, we love colors. Uh, if, if you put a message, something is right, and you put it in red, and something is it's wrong, and you put it in green, we will conflict with that. For us, the good thing has to be green, and the bad thing needs to be red. And if we see it that way, we got it like this. And, and just that small change will help you to change some of your SOPs in the farm. And, you know, some things we have huge SOPs, and some people I have heard, they, uh, they challenge the SOPs use. I don't. I just think we could be doing a better job with some of the SOPs. We are very uh, image-oriented people, so we have to have a picture. Uh, it, it's not the same to say, hey, you look the machine, you find the number. If it's below this, you have to do that. If it's be above that, you do this other thing. If you put the picture with the number, that's going to be easier for these people to remember and to know what to do. And you won't get calls 2 a.m. in the morning, hey, what do I do with this? I just have a calving, and I don't know to do what to do with the colostrum. And you tell the guy, well, do you have the SOP? Yeah, it's right in front of me. Is it in English or Spanish? It is in Spanish. What does it say? It says this and this and this. What do you have to do? This and this and this. So how, how you don't get it, some people still question why they don't get it. It's just because we learn through different ways, and sometimes we don't help to facilitate some of those things. So again, where are we coming from? It's going to make some differences, right? Uh, you don't need to know this, but just, just be aware of something like that. And the values. We are, we are very proud of our values, okay? And so something that we value the most would be family and relationships. And so again, uh, when you work on a team, when you have your feeding team, uh, those guys at some point, they will become family. And they will be proud that they are family, that they work well, they know the, the sons of the other ones. Uh, even the, the sons of their friends will call you uncle. In Brazil, that's, that's just the way it is. Our friends, sons, they will call us uncle and things like that. And relative or extended family. So, you know, I heard these days, uh, this guy, he was, say, he was telling the, the producer, hey, you know, Saturday I need to leave earlier because my third level coaching is, is her birthday and I have to go and attend to that. And I'm not saying that this is wrong, it's right, you have to let him go or not, but just be aware of those situations because for that person, that extended family is very important. That's like a brother for him. Sometimes those third level cousins, they grew up together and that's his brother and things like that, you know. Uh, and art, music, it's, it's, just, it's just part of what we are. So sometimes, you know, uh, I hear music all the time, all the time, and, and these people do. And so sometimes you go to a dairy and you struggle with a guy that is wearing AirPods all the time or that he wants to play music when he's milking cows. Well, people back in Colombia, they believe that if you put music to cows, they will produce more milk. And they play, and they play music, they are more relaxed, they are happier, things like that. So, you know, you have to explain them why they cannot do this. It's, it's not like the rule here is this, you cannot do it. No, it's great, yeah, cows may produce more milk, but if an accident occurs here, we won't be able to hear. We have to hear the machines, we have to hear the vacuum pumps and things like that, and the music is not going to allow that to happen. And so, you know, you work things, and, and what do you think about this? If you ask them what they think, you, you're not going to ask every, every employee in your farm what they think about every specific detail, but you have to include some of these people uh, to 
give their opinion and, and come forward. Uh, religion, I'm not even going to talk about that, but just be aware that there are many different religions out there. We are not all from the same religion. They, some people are very strong on those and images, no images, uh, cries, things like groceries, things like that. Uh, and education is a very huge one, okay? And so if we just move forward, we can, we can think on uh, how this will affect the efficiency basically in three different points. So knowledge, and you can think about your self-knowledge, specific or general knowledge, and we can work on this, on training. But again, the knowledge is gonna be different depending on where these people are coming from the aptitude of the person. So we are very proud that we have good aptitude, not all the time, honestly, but uh, it's just the ability to build relationship, to listen, to have empathy for others. Latinos, they have great empathies, but you know, if, if they don't find empath empathy back or if they, they will just close up. It, it is just like that. And we are very humble. I like to think I am, but Latinos are very humble. <laughs> And some people like at, at the Ohio State University, for example, when they calculate the efficiency of, a, of an employee, they have the three knowledge, aptitude and skills. They power this to, the th to three because it's such important. This is gonna affect your knowledge and your skill. It's gonna affect people working with you on that uh, feeding team. So again, uh, how we can develop aptitude just by providing feedback, you know, just by saying, hey, I, I know, uh, I care about you, you can do this, you cannot do this, and provide good feedback. We're gonna get into that. And in skills, we are very curious about things. Uh, we wanna learn about stuff. Not everybody, but the guys that want to learn, they are just amazing. And those are probably the guys that do the job for 15 years, they are upgraded to manager, and again, I have heard some people, oh, those guys are not prepared to be managers. I agree with Andre, those guys should be managers. They just need to have some training on how to become managers because that's what they didn't get. They know all the details on the feeding. They know all the details of the milking, but they were never prepared on how to manage the, the team, the milking team or the feeding team. Uh, and those are skills they are gonna acquire just by experience. Right. So if we are aware about the knowledge uh, and there have been some surveys out there where they compare basically the Hispanic, uh, the Hispanic employees versus non-Hispanics. And what we can see here on the Y axis is the percentage. Here we have Hispanic, non-Hispanic, higher farm workers. Uh, and we have in gray below ninth grade, high school, high school graduated some college. You can see that Hispanics, we are more on the below ninth grade level. So we have a lower education compared to the non-Hispanic employees that will have high school, some college, etc. And that probably leads to having as well a lower wage on the Hispanic and lower salaries when compared to the non-Hispanic. I'm not criticizing this. I'm, I'm not criticizing anybody here, but it's, it's just something we need to be aware of because when these people are asked, hey, do you wanna continue studying? Do you wanna improve yourself? Half of them will say, yeah, I wanna learn more things. I want to continue studying or, well, I don't, but I want my kids to do. That's why we came here. If we are here just trying to get a, a better, most of them trying to get a better future. This is a survey that was conducted at conducted at South Dakota State University, and it just reflects the same. Uh, these are uh, immigrants, and one third of the employees have, meet, uh, have college education, the other 70% the other are below college education. I'm not saying we have to take these people to college, but just when you are gonna give a talk to them, you have to be, make things easier for them make things that they understand and that they can uh, follow and that they are motivated to follow. Training, oh well, acknowledging the training or acknowledging the good job. This is so important for, for your immigrants employees. I mean, I, I said it before, we 
We came here trying to get a better position. And so when you say, hey, you know what? Good job. You are doing this thing well. That guy is thinking, well, I'm getting just one step closer to what I came here to get, right? And so this, uh, this study is just showing here uh, how the accuracy of the, of, the, of the correct, so how well will they keep doing things or, or the effectiveness of that acknowledgement if it's just an audition, tactile in, in green or visual in the blue or purple, whatever you see there. And you can see that if it's the same day, next day, or next week, all of them will just decrease across the time. So it's not worth it for you to wake up an entire week. It's still worth it, but it's not going to be the same if you do it the same day. You say, hey, great job on that meeting, or great job doing leading the group today. Uh, I saw the cameras during the weekend. Things are looking great. So uh, same days is the best, but if you do a tactile, or a visual, you have a board, you have the filters of your, of your bulk tank. Those are things that people are gonna see. Uh, I love when I arrive to farms that I see a somatic cell counts for that last week or uh, meal production for last week, reproduction metrics for this week, things like that. In simple words that they can understand or, or simple graphics that they can follow, that's gonna motivate a lot of your, of your employees. Training, training, training. We, we always talk about training. We have to train all of them. But these people, we, some of them, they like training. Most of them, I would say. The thing is, short session with small groups will really work better. And what do we get when we go to the farms? Well, we get large groups and we get that we have 40 minutes, one hour to train with some of them. Or maybe, you know what, uh, I'm in Manhattan, so each side of Kansas, I need to go to the west side of Kansas, it's four hours and a half, so I'm gonna do a training. I cannot do just 15 minutes with those guys out there. I need to do 40 minutes at least because to make the tree work, and I need to go to different farms or different groups. So there was a farm, for example, uh, I trained 80 employees in a single day. It was three groups and each, each group was like 20 some, almost 30 people, so, uh, you know, that, that, that creates a challenge. Uh, timing is still a challenge as well. Because when do we train milk employees? When they are either getting ready to go milk house, so they will arrive one hour earlier to the farm. If let's say the shift starts at 4 a.m., so they have to arrive at 3 a.m. to go to a training to a guy they, never see, they have never seen in their life. They don't know what he's gonna talk about. We already see this in an onboard training video. Why do we have to see this again? And why do we have to spend an hour of our time there? Or we're gonna train with the guys that are leaving the shift. So I will do 3 a.m. the guys before they go, 4 a.m. with the guys that just left the 12 hour shift overnight milking cows, drinking some energy things. Uh, you know, some of them will be sleeping in the back of the room, things like that. that that's just expecting, but it's, it's still a challenge so that we have to solve and we have to get, try to get better timings for that. Monthly or quarterly will be kind of ideal. Uh, demonstrate and explain why. For us, it doesn't, it, it's just not satisfying to know why something happens. We, we also have to see something happening. So let's say I was talking to uh, Maristela from South Dakota this week, and she was telling me when I take a, a mammary gland, I open that mammary gland and I put the sealant on the mammary gland in front of them employees, they just go crazy. And now they understand what the sealant is doing on the mammary gland and how we are drying cows and why it's important to do it. And, and you know, it, it's something we see, it's, it's, it's just huge compared to showing you this slide that only has letters there, okay? And that goes for Americans, for immigrants, but for us, it's just huge. Uh, we have to have meetings every, even if things are going well, especially if things are going well, because that's the opportunity we have to acknowledge things are going well, and we should keep up the good work and things like that. And you know, 
other other thing that I found out in there is it's everybody's running so much because we have to do this, we have to do that, and and I understand that, but it just creates a challenge. Um, you know, taking the time to acknowledge something, taking the time to correct something, having a meeting with your employees and things like that. But no, you have to be at ten different places at the same time. So again, another challenge that. I'm not criticizing, but I'm just bringing this up and maybe we can discuss later and try to find some uh, good opportunities there. And so manager or owner should be present in those training. And, you know, uh, I like to go to the dairy, see what they do, get the routine, see if they have an SOP to, for the training I'm going to do and adapt the training to those things. So maybe manager or owner, they maybe okay if they are not because i will present some of the training before to them uh, but at the end of the day those are the people saying hey you have to do this you have to do that so you know it, we have to agree on things and those are the guys that are going to stay in the farm so again considering the educational level promote participation that is huge yeah it, it you cannot go 40 minutes uh, with a crew that just left the milking parlor for 12 hours and just go there and talk for an hour like I'm doing right now. No, they have to participate, they have to engage, uh, they have to feel they are part of what is going on. So again, you have to be sensitive at least of multicultural different backgrounds. Something that is good for me may not be good for my Brazilian wife. And sometimes we discuss it's the same word and we completely understand a different thing. And that happens all the time. Uh, follow up and feedback. Very important. There is no point for me to travel five hours to a farm, do the training, travel five hours the same day back, and just forget about that farm. Never visit again, never see what's going on again. And I, there are different ways to follow up on those depending on the type of training you are doing. That's something as a new extensionist I'm, I'm uh, discovering and it, it is just amazing, you know. Uh, most of people will say you can do surveys. Well, if you are doing a, a milk in a school, for example, you can measure the quality of the milk and say, hey, you guys did this training. Uh, this is what happened because you were aware of how things should work and this is how things change. So let's, let's do a reinforcement on, on that and let's go back to do it again. Aptitude, very huge for uh, Latin and Hispanic people. So uh, there is a theory that it, it just shows there are two ways to get that aptitude. One is the motivators, the other one is the environment. So motivators is basically what is inside me. It's, it's, it's maybe my position, what I can get done, uh, you know, recognition, responsibilities, things like that. Environment is everything that is around me, just as the word say, itself says. And so everything that is with the company, company policy, philosophy, uh, the team I'm working with, my manager, uh, things, working conditions, salary and safety. So this is so important because, well, maybe I'm very motivated. I love my position. I love being in front of uh, dairy employees, managers, uh, dairy, dairy farmers and things like that. But, you know, maybe I have some conflict with the philosophy or the policy of some of those dairies or even with K-State. And so if that happens, I'm not going to be happy on my position. It, it is just like that. And at some point I will say, you know what? No, thanks. Uh, I need to move to something because I cannot keep it up anymore. So it's the same for your dairy employees. If they, if they feel they are part of your company, if they feel they, somebody cares about them, they see good things, they identify themselves with the company, that's great. You are achieving satisfaction here. Motivators, again, invest in training, recognition, uh, positions, put clearly what you expect from them. That's something we struggle so much. We come here, we have no idea how things work sometimes. The words are different. We barely speak the English and we don't know what they are expecting from me. They put me in this scene, but I don't know what they are, what they want me to do. And, you know, some of them may be afraid of doing something because I was not told to do that. So 
and maybe your employee your employer is expecting you to come forward and do things and not be afraid of that so very important as well i'm going to close up with this slide well actually this is the previous one i added another one but uh on the multicultural thing it, it's it's just this slide so we have to explain demonstrate uh, and let people practice again this applies for every employee but for Latin people, these two are just so huge. Uh, I, I guarantee that if you do this, you are going to see a change on the aptitude of your, some of your employees. Not all. Not all of them are there for the same motive or things like that. Uh, and if you, you need to check their work and performance and acknowledge that. And the slide says just about acknowledging good job. You also have to rectify things that is not a good job. Okay. Uh, that doesn't mean that I'm going to call out my employee in the middle of everybody here and say, you are doing this wrong. No, you can, but you can take this guy and say, hey, look, this is not real. This is not good. We have uh, to take care of this this way, this way, and this way. So again, clear expectation. If it's not good, what do I have to do it to get it right? And uh, when we do these things and even this, we are trying to train that guy to be able to work in any dairy in the United States on the world. And when we do this one, we are just making sure that that guy has the opportunity to go anywhere because he's well-trained, but he decides to stay in our farm. And so something that is trending right now, it's WhatsApp. So I don't know how many of you will be familiar with this. Uh, this is way more common. Uh, in outside of the United States, so Colombia, Brazil, people don't communicate via email. They mostly communicate via WhatsApp. So it's just a, it's a phone app. You can use it in your computer. You can use it in your, in your iPad or your tablet. And it's, it's just like texting message, but people are available all the time. And it will tell you if the person is online or not, things like that, that you can activate or disactivate if you don't like those things but the big thing is that you can create groups and you can even create communities and be inside of those communicate communities you can create groups and so a lot of people uh, have conversation business conversation through these team conversations through whatsapp and it's very easy because they say i go out here i see something wrong i can just take my phone take a picture and say hey can the guys of the uh, safety take care of this? Or I can just send an audio as well. And you know, people can react, can respond right away or at their time. And they, people are doing English trainings through WhatsApp. They are doing surveys through WhatsApp, uh, communications. I've met, I have met people, extension is that they have groups where they will say, you know, uh, it's just an extension group. People will get into this. And, you know, I have a farm in Western Kansas. I that found something different. The diet's looking weird. A cow is looking weird. They take a picture and say, hey, has anybody have a case like this? I have no idea what it is, but have somebody have something similar? That's something that Hispanic may, may do, you know, not provide many details, but they will provide a lot of pictures and things like that. So uh, even to share reports and more. Again, very, very popular outside. Uh, government emails will be replaced by these things and uh, it's just uh, another option we have. Uh, with that, I will just summarize. Again, just make sure you know where your employees are coming from. Be aware of that. Offer training in the language uh, they are. Uh, they speak, uh, show them some appreciation. Don't just offer the training in the language, just offer a training in the language that is uh, specific for your farm and using probably perhaps people that care about them or that care about the farm, things like that. Uh, and why not learn to speak some uh, Spanish words yourself? It's not that hard, I mean, and if we are asking these people to learn a different language, uh, I'm sure you can learn 
corraleros or, or very specific words that is going to help you to communicate with these people. With that, I just want to thank again for the invitation, uh, Maristela, for providing some of the uh, slides I show, and I'll be open for questions.